So what I'm going to go through here is show you a little bit of a demo. Um, I'm actually going to skip some slides. I want to start with giving you a context as to why we do this demo. Um, it, the, the interesting thing is we've been, uh, the, the engineering teams have been developing this for a few years now. And as we do that, we work with customers. And, you know, you show slides to customers about here's what we're building, here's what it looks like, all of those kinds of things. And customers nod and they kind of intellectually get it. And what we've noticed is a few times we brought customers into the labs and to actually see the stuff. And you see this light bulb go off, like this just tremendous aha moment just clicks. That's what you really mean. And it's like, you know, I could spend the entire day showing you a thousand slides, but if I spend 10 or 15 minutes just showing you a few very simple things, you really do get it. And so for those of you also in sales out there or customer facing, if you have the opportunity to do this demo, and trust me, if I can do this, any one of us here can do this, um, then, uh, you know, really take the opportunity to do that because it really changes that mindset in your customers from this is sort of intellectually interesting to, oh, wow, okay? So um, let me just start, first of all, by showing you um, the rack. So, so importantly, from a BCS perspective, this is a standard 19-inch rack, and I'll tell you in a minute why that's important. But first thing here is the display, and you'll notice there's a little blue light. So very simple, but if you imagine a data center with racks and racks and racks or rows of racks, right, the ability for having someone to say, I'm having a difficulty and for this light to go red, as an example, um, and see that visually and very simply, uh, dramatic improvement in productivity and, and helpfulness and ease of use. So just simple things like that. There's also a configuration panel here where you can see how the entire rack is configured. Inside the rack, um, and I know the rack says Superdome 2, but there's actually a lot more in here than just Superdome 2. So the first thing at the top here, this section right here, is a regular C7000 rack that we've been selling since mid-2006. <coughs> there is nothing different, special, or whatever about this uh, enclosure. It's a standard C-Class C7000 enclosure. And I'll come back and talk about the specific integrity blades that are loaded here. And you'll also notice some non-integrity components here. I'm going to skip this section here and ask you to look down here at this section down here uh, from here on down. This is the next generation Superdome. So when I talked about this is a standard 19-inch rack, for Superdome this is a big deal because the current generation Superdome is in a custom 800 millimeter wide rack. What does that mean? It means that it doesn't fit in a standard rack. It doesn't fit in a standard area of the data center. For those of you who might be familiar with the pods, the performance optimized data center, where we wheel a, a, a DR center to the back of a, of a customer's environment, we can now put a Superdome in that environment. So uh, before I go through and actually show you in more detail some of this, I'm going to go to the back of the rack. The camera person here is going to follow me to the back, show you just a couple of simple things, and then I'll come back and show you some detail here. So just to orient yourself again, if we look at the back of the rack, so this top section here, standard C7000 that we've been shipping for a very long time. If we go down from where my hand is here all the way down, this is our next generation Superdome. Now, the other two pieces in the middle I didn't sh that I'll talk about a little bit more is our I.O. expanders, and I'll go into that in more detail, as well as a uh, 2U, two-socket rack mount server. But very simple things where customers get very excited is if I do something simple, this is a fan, right? This is a, one of our active fans, and I just pull it out, and I go down to Superdome, and I pull out the Superdome fan. So first of all, if the system was running, you'd see all of our intelligence in the system kick in. The fans would spin up. They'd go faster and make sure the cooling's happening. But then I can take that Superdome fan, put it into the C7000, and I can take the C7000 fan and put it right into Superdome. So something very simple, very easy, but we've never, ever done that before. Right. One of the elements that I'll talk about because I'm back here that's very specific to Superdome is something we call our crossbar fabric. This is what allows the magic of Superdome to scale up and, and very large and also provides a lot of our resiliency. So the crossbar fabric, um, if I was doing what I'm doing right now to a running system, nothing would happen. So the system would actually, by just pulling this out and all of the cables and everything, the system would actually keep running and no one would even know that anything's happened. So we provided full redundancy, fault tolerance for the entire scale-up fabric by doing that, and therefore online repair and replacement. Notice everything I'm doing here, um, there's actually no tools. 
So I'll, uh, from a, another example of where the teams have done a great job, this is the power supply for the 2U2 rack mount server. This is the power supply for our IO expander. Same thing. When we did this demo for uh, Mark Hurd, we'll go back in front now. When we did this demo for Mark Hurd, the folks from HPIT were in the room, and just this little trick of moving stuff around like I'm doing, right, they were looking at millions of dollars of saving just in stocking of spare parts. And then the other thing is when we talk, think about our scale, right, think about the parts that we stock on a worldwide basis to service our customers. If everything is custom, you're stocking custom parts every single city around the world and all of our distribution centers around the world. All of a sudden, all of that cost comes down. So sometimes from an engineering perspective, we think about, hey, I can do some cool, new, different, unique, special thing for BCS. But what we really need to do is say, and does that cool, new, unique, special thing drive incremental costs throughout the supply chain, the value chain, the service chain, et cetera, and is it really worth doing it, and how do we think about it in those terms? So let me do a few things here, similar kind of concept. So this is the power supply for the C7000, been around for a while. This is the power supply for Superdome. Look familiar? Same thing. All right, so let me go through the details of what's here. So this is our next generation integrity blades. Um, here's another, the big part of the innovation here is what we call our scalable blade link. Historically, what BCS did is if our competitors did a 2U, 2-socket box, we built a box. If our competitors did a 4-socket box, we built a 4-socket box and so on, an 8-socket and so on and so forth. And what we decided to do was change the game and say, rather than have a whole bunch of independent engineering teams all working on their own program, let's build one thing and see how we can reuse that thing. So these four blades are actually built from one common building block, this one single blade. And all of these four blades are actually completely identical. And so all we've done is we've added this scalable blade link technology, and by connecting these blades together, that's what creates an eight socket server. Two socket blade, two socket blade, two socket blade, two socket blade, one connector becomes an eight socket server. Now you say, why is that interesting? Because if I take this thing here and I go like this, I've just turned it into a four socket server. And if I had another one, this would be another four socket server. And guess what? This is a two socket server. Right? So from an internal perspective, we focus all of our engineering on one modular building block and make it really cool. From a customer's perspective, we've really dramatically improved the flexibility of what they can create. So let me pull one of these and so we can actually look inside real quick. Notice how all of this is being done without tools. Very easy to do. So let me first of all pop this up, because this is a standard C-Class blade, right? Fully C-Class compatible. Standard DDR3 memory. Historically, BCS was, hey, we can do cool stuff with memory. We'll go create our own custom memory. But again, and, and I appreciate the fact that people really want to be innovative and go create more margin. That's a good thing. But at the same time, we then have to add a little PhD to our thinking and go, now when I did that, did I go add so much cost in the supply chain that I offset all of that incremental margin I was going to go get, right? And that's where we have to get really good. And so this is industry standard DDR3 memory. These are, for those of you familiar, this is the I.O. infrastructure for C-Class. And so that I.O. infrastructure is identical for, um, uh, for the servers. I won't take these out. Normally I do during the demo. These are our Intel 9300 processors, codenamed Tequila. There's two of them here, but I won't pull them out. So I'm going to do very quickly, I'm going to do the same thing with... Um, Oops. 
<laughs> okay. Just to make the point here, this is actually a um, uh, uh, an X86 BL class blade. Uh, this is a tape blade uh, or storage blade. This is a, a ProLiant uh, blade as well. So all of that common infrastructure being used throughout. Let's pop out our Superdome blade so you can kind of get the point. I'm going to do something similar here. But just before I do that, just to make the point of, uh, of this, let me pop out this blade again, or let me take this, um, this ProLiant blade. So it's a ProLiant blade. This bottom half of the Superdome chassis is 100% electrically identical to this C7000. Okay, so when we look at common fans, common power supplies, common backplane, common infrastructure, common parts throughout the whole ecosystem, that's the degree of how identical we're talking about. And so just very quickly, we'll take a similar quick look inside the Superdome. You'll see similar thing, which is industry standard DDR3 memory. Same that's used in our ProLiant servers, all of our other servers. This I.O. infrastructure that I showed you in the other blades, again, 100% identical. So we're all reusing all of that uh, from all of our C-class infrastructure. And the part that is different, the part that does make Superdome what Superdome is, lives on top here. This kind of top section that was blank after I put that blade. And this is where we, we put what we call this crossbar fabric that allows us to scale Superdome and do all of that high-end magic that Superdome does. So this is a big part of what the converged infrastructure is all about, is this reuse and extreme leverage throughout the entire product portfolio, and you really have the ability now to have a completely different conversation with customers, right? And so if you're our competitor, you start the conversation with, let me tell you about my chip. Then you go to, let me tell you about my box. Now, if you're in sales, is that the conversation you want to have, or do you want to have this conversation? And I don't know about you, but this is the conversation I want to have with a customer because it's just so powerful and it's across the whole ESN portfolio, the, you know, the whole ESSN portfolio. So just in the interest of the time, I'm going to skip through. We have some I.O. expansion here capabilities um, uh, that I didn't go through, uh, but um, it gives you a pretty good idea of how uh, we've dramatically changed the answer and built a very real version of the converged infrastructure portfolio throughout. And with that, I'm going to skip some slides and ask Marius to come up and talk about HP networking.